Inside this bag is a 12-year-old girl. She's being carried to the camp by her cousins after crossing the border. Fajivak Begum saw Myanmar soldiers slit her brother's throat. They then came after her. Her cousins won't say exactly what they did to Fajivak, since she's been unable to speak, eat or drink. Whatever they did has put her in a state of shock. Aung San Suu Kyi is responsible for all this. She's responsible for the killings, for the violence against our people. Rohingya supported the Nobel laureate, hoping she would bring an end to their persecution. Instead, mob attacks led by Buddhist monks and the military against their community have intensified since Aung San Suu Kyi came to power in 2015. Despite the return to democracy, they can't vote, go to school or practice their religion freely. This is the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, formerly known as Al Yaqeen a secular militant group responsible for the August attacks against the Myanmar security forces. Their leader, Ataullah, continues to call on all men and women to fight what they describe as the brutal regime of Yangon and an end to the oppression of Rohingyas. We met one of the group's members in a secret location. It's the first time they accept to talk publicly. He says they have no choice but to take up arms in order to stop what they describe as the start of a genocide against their people. If they don't give us our rights, if they keep killing our people, raping our women, then yes, there will be more attacks to come. This is our land. We will fight back. Myanmar's response to the group's attack is described by the UN as textbook ethnic cleansing. The group is ill-equipped and has few weapons. It is no match to Myanmar's military might, but it has the support of many Rohingya refugees, a people stateless and in limbo, who continue to suffer of unspeakable violence.